Kansas Information Network News. I'm Jen Austin. Out with the old, in with the new, Julio Flores has more. Emporia State football fans will see an upgrade to Welch Stadium when attending home games in 2024. That upgrade comes to the seating. Over the summer, the Hornets replace old seats and seat backs that were originally installed in the 1990s. From a distance, the over 900 chairs spent on ESU and alternating yellow and black. The Hornets kick off the season with rival Washburn and Emporia on Thursday, August 29th. I'm Lou Flores. The man who pleaded guilty to stealing the Jackie Robinson statue from League 42 at McAdams Park in Wichita has been sentenced to prison. Ricky Alderete was sentenced Friday to a total of 180 months in prison. That equals 15 years. Alderete said in court the drugs got the best of him and he made poor decisions. The new Jackie Robinson statue will be unveiled to the public today. Donations poured in to help make that happen after the original statue was vandalized. This is Kansas Information Network News. What is dedication? The thing that drives me every day as a dad is Dariana. We call him uh, Day Day for short. Every day he's hungry for something, whether it's attention, affection, knowledge. And there's this huge responsibility in making sure that when he's no longer under my wing, that he's a good person. I think the advice I would give is you don't need to know all the answers. The craziest thing was believing that your dad knew everything. So as a dad, you felt like you had to know everything. You had to get everything right. It's okay to make mistakes. As long as it's coming from love, then, you know, it kind of starts to work itself out. I want him to be able to sit back one day and go, we worked together, we did a good job. That's dedication. Find out more at fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Good morning, I'm Natalie Hadley with your KQNK News, brought to you by Firebolt Ag, LLC, serving all of your chemical and fertilizer needs. On Friday, the Kansas Office of Registered Apprenticeship announced a new $500,000 grant opportunity for established registered apprenticeship programs in Kansas, and the awards will range from $75,000 to $200,000 per awardee. These grant funds will be awarded to assist existing programs with technical instruction on the job training, staffing, and additional employees to implement and manage programs, marketing and outreach, and other activities. Lieutenant Governor and Secretary of Commerce David Tolan said the Kansas Office of Registered Apprenticeship plays a vital role in Kansas's economic growth by helping prepare the workforce for success. This additional funding opportunity plays an integral part in growing and supporting the registered apprenticeship programs throughout the state, as, over time, the grant has helped with recent successes, including the 80% growth in new registered apprentices across the state, which went from 925 in 2023 to 1,672 in 2024. Director of Apprenticeship and Internship Shonda Anderson said that last year registered apprenticeship programs used these funds in a variety of creative ways. She said investments were made for Spanish-speaking instructors, new training equipment for electricians and heavy equipment operators, and agriculture and human resource opportunities. The Kansas Department of Commerce is currently seeking applications, and eligible applicants must be a state educational institution, business, nonprofit group, or workforce board with projects that will attract and retain employees and continue to build the state's workforce through registered apprenticeship. Those applying should clearly demonstrate a linkage between projects, industry demand, and apprenticeship training and recruitment. And along with that, applicants are required to provide a one-to-one match for every grant dollar requested. Interested parties have until 5 p.m. on August 25th to apply, and the announcement of awardees is expected in September. For more information about the Kansas Office of Registered Apprenticeship, you can visit kansascommerce.gov. One person was injured in an accident during a police pursuit just before 3 p.m. on Friday in Rollins County. The Kansas Highway Patrol reported law enforcement were in pursuit northbound on Kansas 117, six miles north of the U.S. 36 Junction, at a high rate of speed of a 2012 Dodge Journey driven by 36-year-old Kayla Vonnet Williams of Omaha, Nebraska. The SUV traveled off of the roadway to the left, struck a large dirt embankment, became disabled, and caught on fire. According to the Kansas Highway Patrol, EMS transported Williams to the Rollins County Health Center, 
She was not wearing a seatbelt, and authorities did not report what prompted the chase. According to a report from Kansas State University farm management economist Greg Ibendell, Kansas farmers seem to be positioned for a bounce back in net farm income as 2024 rolls along. And while, technically, that is good news, it's tempered by the fact that Kansas farmers are coming off one of the biggest years in about a decade. K-State reported earlier this year that 2023 net farm income in the state was on average $89,667, which is about 56 percent below the year before. But this most recent analysis of 500 grain farms in the Kansas Farm Management Association's database, Ivan Dahl said he's predicting a 23 to 30 percent increase in net farm income in 2024 for Kansas farms. However, he said that's really from a very low base to start with. So overall, net farm income is going to be below what it's been for the previous five to six years. According to Ibendahl, in pure numbers, Kansas farms may see 2024 net farm income hit an average of $118,000, and in central and western Kansas, those numbers may top $156,000 to $149,000, respectfully. Net farm income in the east, however, may slow to $72,336, and this is the only region in the state that won't see a rise compared to 2023. He said signs are mixed for 2025, as average net farm income in the state may be just below his forecast for 2024, though slightly higher in the west and east, and slightly lower in the central region. Ivan Dahl's complete look at how the rest of 2024 is shaping up for the Kansas farmers, as well as his forecast for 2025, is available on agmanager.info, a website maintained by K-State's Department of Agriculture Economics. In Nebraska news, according to the Hastings International Organization, a teen girl has died following a drowning at the Hastings Aqua Court last week. The organization stated in a news release on Sunday night that a 13-year-old girl from Japan who is visiting Hastings as part of the international homestay program between Ozu, Japan and Hastings passed away just after 12.30 a.m. at Children's Hospital in Omaha. According to Hastings Police, at around 1.50 p.m. last Wednesday, officers, along with Hastings Fire and Rescue, responded to the Hastings Aqua Court for reported drowning. After watching video surveillance, officials said it showed the juvenile female walking from the shallow end of the pool and crossing the rope into the deep end. And Hastings Police said she then became submerged underwater where she was unable to resurface. Hastings Police said the girl was later transferred to Children's Hospital in Omaha. The city of Hastings announced on Friday that the aqua court will remain closed for the remainder of the season, as city officials said Hastings Park and Recreation determined it was in the best interest of aqua court staff not to reopen after internal discussions. The doggy paddle event, initially planned for August 12th, has also been canceled. The aqua court was originally scheduled to close for the season on Friday, August 9th, and the Blue Hill Aquatic Center is honoring Hastings aqua court season passes. A Mitchell man has been sentenced to five years probation and 10 weekends in jail for two counts of falsification of annual financial reports filed by a labor union. And 43-year-old Jacob Wilkins has also been ordered to pay $12,381.82 in restitution to the National Association of Letter Carriers Branch 1836. According to U.S. Attorney Susan Lair, Wilkins has already paid $2,316.39 in restitution. Wilkins was the president of the National Association of Letter Carriers, Branch 1836, from 2001 until 2021 when he resigned, and he was required to keep bank statements and supporting documentation that would justify spending union money. However, between 2016 and 2020, Wilkins used $23,689.21 of union funds for personal expenses. In 2021, other union members noticed the funds being used for non-union-related expenses, and Wilkins did admit to using funds and that he stopped keeping records showing that he used those funds as of 2010. I'll be back with more in just a moment. Firebolt Ag is a full-service fertilizer and chemical retailer. They customize products for individual farmers' needs, with the primary focus being customer profitability. Let Josh and Jack help you get the most out of your farm ground. They also provide in-house marketing with Ron Wall of Flatwater Solutions. Visit Ron in Phillipsburg or call Josh at 785-854-8484 or Jack at 308-840-2819. Firebolt Ag, your leader in agriculture. 
in a battle between two Kansas teams for the first time since 2000 and only the third time in 90 years, the Hayes Larks rallied to defeat the Hutchinson Monarchs 7-3 on Saturday at X Stadium to claim their first ever NBC World Series title. The Monarchs, who won it all a year ago, took an early 3-0 lead in the second inning. However, the Larks quickly had an answer and never looked back. Hayes got on the board in the third inning with a sacrifice fly from Wichita State's Caleb Duncan to trail 3-1, and Duncan gave the Larks the momentum they needed. In the fifth inning, he added another run with an RBI single to make it 3-2. The score remained the same until the last two innings when Wilbert Espinal stepped up and delivered. Espinal hit a ground rule double in the eighth inning to tie the game up at 3-3, then Tabor Stokes gave the Larks a 4-3 lead with an RBI single. The Larks rolled into the top of the ninth, taking advantage of free bases to score one more run, and then Espinal sealed their win with another ground rule double to win it 7-3. In his 40th year as head coach, Frank Leo guided the Larks to their first NBC World Series championship in their seventh title game appearance, and the Larks received a check for $18,000. Lieutenant Governor and Secretary of Commerce David Tolan announced $380,000 has been awarded to 40 Kansas counties in the first round of Rural Opportunity Zone local marketing grants. The funds are intended to help counties market the unique Rural Opportunity Zone financial incentives available to new residents, which includes student loan repayment assistance and or 100% state income tax credit. Counties that have annually contributed and supported the matching requirement of the program will receive between $5,000 and $15,000 to better support and promote their program, and funding will assist the counties and local partner organizations as they develop customized marketing strategies best suited for their communities. Lieutenant Governor and Secretary of Commerce David Tolan said the Rural Opportunity Zone Marketing Grant will provide support to showcase each community's potential to be that perfect place for someone relocating to Kansas. Awarded funds can be used for initiatives such as creating or improving a community's Rural Opportunity Zone marketing approach to highlight the opportunities for relocation, creating a new promotional relocation video, and supporting a talent recruitment campaign at colleges and universities. Director of the Office of Rural Prosperity, Tricia Purden, said communities will now have the financial resources to market their rural communities to people looking to move to rural Kansas. Awards are granted based on the county's annual sponsorship of the Rural Opportunity Zone. As of Monday, July 22nd, law enforcement agencies across the state have been looking for excessive speeders, and this will run through August the 11th. During this period, motorists can expect increased safety messaging and increased speeding enforcement to urge drivers to obey posted speed limits and help reduce crashes and fatalities. Law enforcement agencies and the Kansas Department of Transportation will also increase their messaging about speeding on signs around the state. The statewide speeding campaign called Speeding Wrecks Lives comes after the Kansas Highway Patrol has pushed lawmakers for stricter penalties for excessive speeding earlier this year. The campaign emphasizes that speeding is not only financially costly, but it can also ruin lives. According to the Kansas Department of Transportation, the chance of death or serious injury doubles for every 10 miles per hour over 50 miles per hour of vehicle travels, and speeding is a factor in almost one-third of all traffic fatalities nationwide. In 2023, 79 people lost their lives in speed-related crashes in Kansas, a reduction from 2022. However, 2,085 people were seriously injured in speed-related crashes in 2023, an increase from the previous year. I'm Natalie Hadley. Your KQNK News was brought to you by Firebolt Ag, LLC, farmers helping farmers to succeed. You can contact Firebolt Ag today to get the most out of your farmland. Your KQNK weather forecast is being brought to you by Hinkle Termite and Pest Control, your Norton experts for all of your pest control needs. Your forecast for today It should be sunny and hot with a high near 103 and a southwest wind of 10 to 15 miles per hour. For tonight, it should be partly cloudy with a low around 64 and a southeast wind of 5 to 10 miles per hour becoming north in the evening. On Tuesday, it should be mostly sunny with a high near 88 and a northeast wind around 10 miles per hour. And on Tuesday night, it should be partly cloudy with a low around 63. I'll be back with the rest of your forecast in just a moment. When you got bugs, we know what a nuisance that can be. Lock them out. 
from Hinkle Termite and Pest Control. Lock Em Out is our very effective residential insect prevention program. We'll come to your place and treat your foundation plus all insect entryways. And while we're there, receive a free termite inspection. Call Mr. Rich Wenzel, our certified technician in Norton, at 785-202-0167. That's 202-0167. Continuing with your weather forecast, on Wednesday it should be sunny and hot with a high near 98. On Thursday, there's a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms before 1 p.m. Otherwise, it'll be partly sunny with a high near 85. On Friday, a 50% chance of showers and thunderstorms mainly before 1 p.m. should be mostly cloudy with a high near 78. On Saturday, there's a 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms. Otherwise, partly sunny with a high near 79. And on Sunday, a 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms. Otherwise, it's going to be mostly sunny with a high near 84. Currently, with fair skies, it is 75 degrees. The humidity is 54%. The wind speed is southwest at 9 miles per hour. The barometric pressure is 30.02. And the dew point is 57 degrees. Your weather was brought to you by Hinkle Termite and Pest Control right here in Norton. You can call Hinkle Termite and Pest Control at 785-202-0167 for all of your pest control needs. It is 819. It's time for your Kansas Sports, brought to you by United Northwest Federal Credit Union, where everything they do, they do for you. Save more, earn more with the Easy Saver account at the United Northwest Federal Credit Union. Enrollment in this program automatically rounds up the amount of all debit card and share draft purchases made from your checking account to the next whole dollar and deposits into the Easy Saver savings account. Not only will this account help you save, but it also earns 2.01% APY monthly. Special terms and conditions apply. Come in today and open your Easy Saver account at the United Northwest Federal Credit Union, where everything we do, we do for you. NCUA insured. KIN Sports, I'm Spencer Dupuy. The Chiefs led the NFL in holding penalties last year, and offensive coordinator Matt Nagy spoke at training camp about how they're trying to cut down on them for this upcoming season. So it was something where, for us, we knew that um, there was the issue with JT with some of the false starts and the alignments, and it became a big deal. Uh, penalties that you have set you back. So you're looking at second and long. You're looking at first and long. You're looking at creating a first down on third down or a big play in the red zone, and now all of a sudden you got to reset and do it again. Uh, our guys are aware of that, but we don't – I think going into a new season, it is it is just that. It's a new season, and we make sure that we focus in and lock in on the fundamentals of being smart and staying away from penalties. But they're going to happen, but we, we can't. it can't be repetitive like they were last year. we got to stay away from that. And if we do that, we stay positive with the yards. We think we can be pretty good on offense. Kansas Information Network Sports, I'm Spencer Dupuy. challenge it's not something you shy from it's a chance to up your game every day brings a new challenge but with the enhanced channel seed brand on your side you can rise to it with our top performing seed innovative digital tools and expanded agronomic support you can turn tomorrow's challenges into your next advantage your enhanced channel seed brand let's rise to the challenge learn more at channel.com slash rise read and follow pesticide label directions irm grain marketing and other stewardship practices how was your drive to school? Let me tell you. I had to get my iced coffee first. I just can't seem to put it down. My favorite rapper just announced a tour. My phone was buzzing like crazy. I'm so excited. I had to text all my friends right then to talk about it. Then, someone started calling me and... Let's try that again. I turned my phone off right away. I never drive distracted. Visit stoptextstoprex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. It's true, many of us spend more time thinking about what's for dinner than preparing for retirement. But if you think your retirement needs deserve more attention, I agree, and I'd like to help. I'm Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Philip Eisenhagen. Together we can give your long-term retirement strategy the attention it deserves. Stop by our office at 418 East Holm here in Norton or call 877-3373. Edward Jones, Making Sense of Investing, member SIPC. 